die, you are frozen in time for a later date. Just like write your name here. So when we start, it's going to start something like, I'm going to just put this paper up. Can you see it? Yeah. And you could read it? It's it's legible? It's a little blurry, but yeah. Okay. It wasn't in back. For me, it looks like it's backwards. For you, it's not backwards, right? Okay, yeah. Good. All right, good. Um, um, and is the, uh, uh, okay, that's great. Um. I think that's it. Hello. Okay, so this is going to be an interview with artist Christy Blizzard. Hello, Christy Blizzard. Hello. Okay, so when did you decide to become an artist? Um, I decided to become an artist when I was around like 17 years old. And I, um, I grew up in rural Indiana. And I saw a book of Van Gogh's paintings. And I thought I was the reincarnation of Van Gogh. So right at that point, I knew I needed to be an artist. Um, I had a lot of freedom when I was a child to just like draw on the walls and, you know, like make, you know, paper airplanes and stuff and put stickers everywhere. And um, my parents weren't, you know, they're not artists. And um, I didn't really, uh, you know, go to museums or anything. Or I didn't really have any kind of formal training, but I was, I had a lot of freedom. And you started uh, as an artist, you started painting. Would that have been what you uh, started out in painting and then gravitated towards music and, and performance? Tell us a little bit about the evolution of where you started as an artist and where yeah. you've landed now. No pun, no well, pun intended with the land. Yeah. <sighs> um, well, even when I was a kid, I used to do like stop motion videos with my best friend. And we would actually like do little plays that we would write with each other and videotape them. So... I think even at an early age, I was doing like little videos and performances, even though I didn't, you know, I didn't know it was art or anything. So, but, um, so like films, you were basically making little storyboard films. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah like little like skits we would act out and um, we would do like do things with troll, you know, the little troll dolls and my little ponies and stuff. And we did that for like years. Um, and they're funny. My dad still has them on video. And they're really bizarre and weird. Um, so I was, I always was able to just like, you know, do anything that I wanted. Um, and then uh, I, I didn't really take art very much in high school. And so I was going to be an English teacher. Um, but then I uh, saw the uh, book of Van Gogh and um, it just like, I felt so connected with it. And, and I had never experienced anything like that. And um, the, ac just, the actual work, the, the, the his, no, his work? No, it was just a book. It mm -hmm. was just like in a mall in mm -hmm. Indiana. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I just saw it and it totally changed my life. And so then I basically taught myself to paint, you know, just crudely taught myself to paint in three months. And then I went to art school. <laughs> 
and that and then then I I was like really steadfast on being a painter. Um, I was obsessed with you know modern painting like Matisse and Van Gogh and Cezanne and Georgie Morandi and Gorky and I would get them all tattooed on me as I was being obsessed with them and I so oh, okay. just kind of unbeknownst I was becoming a kind of you know very aware of like how my body kind of worked in my art um, but these are were connect these have been like collected since I was 18. Oh. Yeah, so I was really like, I had given my entire life to painting, you know, and so, um, and even in graduate school, I was still like, basically a still life painter. And then what happened? And then from painting to, where did yeah. the music and the performance, you know, come in? Well, I think, um, oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> um I had a really good mentor in graduate school named, named Craig Dongofsky, and we're still really good friends. And um, he just kept trying to pry me open in a way that no one had really tried. And he would just challenge me with everything that I was doing and everything that I thought who I was. And kind of in retrospect, I had a lot of trauma that I was working through in my late teens that pretty much consumed my 20s. And so it really wasn't until I was way, way kind of out of school that I was I was able to kind of really discover parts of myself that I had, um, I don't know, didn't, I felt like I wasn't allowed to, uh, to know or like, I don't know, I, it was, I didn't realize how conditioned I was to like be docile, you know? Um, and so it was just a, it was a really long process of just, um, being like trying to figure out who I was, who I am, you know, and, um, and that these things that I've been, that I was taught to like hide or, um, not pay attention to or not appreciate were the things that I actually had to really start to, um, make more important than anything else. So it was a really long process, but I'm really grateful for it. Um, do you want to blow your nose one second? No, I just have really bad allergies. Um, now with the masks and these uh these outfits that uh, you make them, right? You create them. Do you sketch them out first before you make them? Tell tell us a little bit about that. And is does this go hand in hand with trauma wearing these yeah. masks? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So the masks are um, I have three of them, and um. I, I, I got these in 2017. I was a resident at ArtPace, and uh, they, they gave me a lot of money to, to start this project. So it really a lot, all, all of this started in 2017, like literally two years ago. And so, um, but the, the place where I got these masks, they don't make them anymore. So I have three of them. <laughs> That's like, it has to last me like at least a decade. And they're, they're 3D printed um, full color and they're very delicate. Like they're basically made out of paper pulp. And so you can't varnish them any water. Like, so they're getting kind of fucked up and cracked. But one of this one is Scarlett Johansson because this is the only one with the mouth hole. And then I have Elle Fanning and then I have Jennifer Lawrence who I never wear, but I put that one on this other little puppet that I've done performances with. So basically, like I just found this out like two days ago. I cannot get any more. I mean I can get like a I can get them printed on a regular three D printer and then airbrush them, you know? So I'm just but anyway, so It's like uh, the Mike you know, the Michael Myers mask from the John Carpenter's yeah. Halloween. It was a William Shatner mask that they you know, oh. ripped off the hair and messed it. And they, you know, you can't get this mask anymore. And that's why they keep right. having to invent it. So anyway, keep going as well. Yeah. Um, so the first, the very first costumes I did not make, I, they were actually like um, masochistic sex suits that I had designed in China. And oh. so they were latex blow up, you know, like kind of uh Sensory full full body outfits full body yeah. outfits mm. yeah I, there was a green one that actually covered my face and i did a performance in roswell new mexico with that one um my puppet jean francois leotard and i went to, we did the ufo costume contest and then we met a modeling agency who wanted me to model 
with who wanted me to do a photo shoot with their model in the full costume and they didn't realize that I'm a performance artist but so the first two costumes I didn't make but ever since then I've been making the costume so they've uh the one of them referenced like lactation so it was this giant kind of weird nipple thing and I had milk kind of a weird soft sculpture milk come out of me uh, and then um, um I'm work. I did a Starman costume last week, and um, I'm gonna. My next one is gonna be a weird, like Cubert inspired um, costume, and then I'm gonna do. Um, I've got like a few more. So yeah, I sketch them out. Um, I try to just stay like one or two ahead. You know, like I try not to work too far in advance because I have like three of them planned right now, and. Um, now, but there's yeah. there's one main character, at, or or is there not one main character that you work with? Well, there's basically two main characters, so the Scarlett Johansson and then the Elle Fanning. Yeah, but they all, you know, it's really about that, um, you know, the that I can enter their vessel, you know, that they're just kind of a facade that I can enter. But what about the, the little man that's in your Instagram videos, this little man that you dance around with in performances? Yeah, I can get him. Oh, please. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's a severed head behind your chair over there. Oh, yeah. Those are my androids. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So this is great. This wow. is my puppet um, based off the French philosopher Jean-Francois Lyotard. And, um, and so... When I originally started the project, I was taking him to um, ele uh, electronic dance music festivals. on how like how can um an idea exist outside of a body so can there be a kind of like collective like body from a crowd or, or a kind of virtual body that's created through a kind of collective um presence to have like a different kind of idea and so we would go to raves and edm festivals and we would try to experience a thought outside of our body with the crowd and so I would take him to these various places and um, and so he was always kind of bewildered and he never he would not speak. And so he was just trying to understand the strange world, you know, where nobody really is critical and, you know, people just they just do whatever they're told. <laughs> I've, and, I've, to, I've told you before, you know, when I've seen uh, clips of your performances with him, it's it's like he's. Absolutely. I mean, even right now, I mean, it's, it's, he's alive, you know, it's, wow. you guys have a real connection there. Yeah. And I didn't make him. So I had a puppeteer make him. So when I was at Art Pace, I, I was able to commission him, you know, from like a professional puppeteer. And yeah, so he's pretty amazing. And he's gotten a little dirty. He's go he's, he, is he going gray as well? It looks like he's getting, uh, he's, he's getting older, huh? Yeah, he was always a little gray. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's just gotten a little dirtier. All right. And tell so tell us a little bit about when you were on Good Morning America and how that worked out. How did you pull that off? So that was the project that I did before this, and um, I did I did it from pretty much like 2014 to 2016. And so I would go on the Today Show and Good Morning America and hold up uh, like signs in the audience to distract from the broadcast. So they would be, um, I was really aware not to break the rules on the website, which basically just said you can't be profane or political, but I would try to find that middle ground where I could critique the show and try to like really earnestly connect with audiences, um, but not get um, banned or kicked off so I could keep coming back. Um, and so that was a really interesting experience. And I think that the... Um, I think that one time on the Today Show, the security guard actually took my photograph, and I think they did facial recognition on me. And I was asked to leave Good Morning America twice oh, for like wow. 
confusing signs. Oh, yeah. wow. So I was actually censored, which was really bizarre. The facial recognition, did it happen with your actual face or with this face? Yeah, I this was before this project, so um, I, I don't think they would allow this on. I wonder if the if, yeah, if the facial recognition technology could have picked anything up or actually arrested those actresses or something like that. Yeah, or, no. I mean, I'm sure they looked me up to okay. make sure I wasn't, you know, dangerous yeah. to them. So so right now, um, how do you survive? Like, how, how do you uh, pay your bills and stuff? You're, 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 you're a teacher, correct? You're like a professor? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm able to, you know, have a salary and I love teaching. And so fortunately, you know, that gives me freedom to not have to worry about, you know, making a product or, or, you know, that idea of like consumer recognition or product recognition. So, um, yeah, I'm really fortunate like that right now. So. So how would you describe your 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 work? What I mean, would you call it experimental, avant-garde, Dada? I mean, your work screams Dada to me. I mean, yeah. how how would you describe yourself in your your work? Well, I mean, I am really interested in you know like you know how contemporary art works and that idea of you know the avant-garde artist who. Um, tries to have an idea that hasn't existed before, you know, that idea of like being on the new frontier. Um, and so I really try to place myself as much as I can in that territory. And it's like really, really hard. And, you know, it's always demanding, but that's where I find it most exciting. Are you sort of on a path right now? Is there a goal you're trying to reach right now with these performances? You've been doing them, I think, for about a year. Is that correct? The the, the live performances. Yeah. And and do you have sort of a an, a a vision goal that you're trying to reach? Well, I just like them to get more like more. I don't know if the word is more ambitious, but I just want them. Um, to just continue to gain momentum and the costumes have been becoming more um, like lar like more visually lush and so I think I could keep kind of upping the spectacle you know that, that, that last outfit you posted on it the with the the, yeah. the yellow yeah what, what was that that was um it was partly inspired by Martha Graham's Lamentations piece where she had a dancer wrapped in spandex. And then I had a couple of really good friends who just went to Japan and they sent me a photo of this sculpture from a Japanese sculpture garden. Um, that was, I forget the artist's name, but it was made in the forties and it was basically like my mask on a giant kite. And so it was those combination of things that, um, led me to create that costume and then it it just kind of became this star per like the star man that i didn't even really intend um and so now i have a bunch of costumes inspired by that one costume so oh, wow. yeah the um the films you make are your films pretty much uh documents of your performances or would you say they're films in and of themselves tell us a little bit about yourself as a film artist which you are yeah. Well, I, I do, you know, performance documentation, but I also would, you know, make videos that are standalone and separate. Um, they're, yeah, like oftentimes the, you know, I made one video last summer. I was in Skowhegan last summer and I made one video um, from footage from um, a person who made this like life-size Scarlett Johansson android. And he's actually made like two of them. And so I took the footage and then created a new video out of it. And then that inspired me to actually start to create my own androids based off of Elvis heads that I've ha that I'm hacking. Um, and so that everything kind of feeds itself. But yeah, I definitely have standalone videos that are not performance documentation. What are, you're you're hacking the, the the Elvis heads? Yeah, yeah. So um, here. Here's oh, okay, got it. So oh. this is like the Elvis head with it. This one's kind of broken because his neck is messed up, but I've cut it, cut the face off, um, and so that was Elvis. Yeah. Yeah, he has the same eyes. And then this is kind of what I'm starting to turn them into, and then they're basically my back. They're gonna be my band. It's like your twin. Yeah, I know. 
Yeah, so this is they're gonna be my my backup singers, kind of like my band, and um, so I have to lift it know, up, put, lift it up a little bit so we can read the whole shirt. That's great. The yeah. Bill Hicks UFO Encounter. That's the band name. Love it. Yeah. So that's a perfect segue to tell us a little bit about um, your uh, experience that has affected your 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 art. Yeah. So I had a. A life-changing experience in 2015 and um, like I I don't know if I died or I don't know exactly what happened but I feel like ancient there's these ancient spirits who um, somehow seem to have a kind of invested interest in me and like are helping me you know communicate their you know message and so that's basically Hel helping you communicate it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm still trying to sort that out, but it's basically like if I were to receive inspiration, I think it's like from them. Like if I get an idea, like the Starman idea, you know, the way all that kind of came together. I think it's like part of it is like that's what they wanted me to do. And Canada is involved in this as well, right? Yeah, so I saw in a kind of, yeah, in like a vision, I saw the Canadian flag. And so um, what I realized is that they're friendly neighbors and that also like they use imagery that I know um, to communicate with me. So they can, you know, they, you know, it's like they're so advanced, you know, that they know our language so they can communicate with us with our own language. Um, this, this band you're making, the, the Bill Hicks UFO encounter, they'll, yeah. there'll be how many band members? I believe there's going to be four and myself. So there'll be five kind and of like the Rolling Stones. They'll be, uh, on stage, uh, performing. They'll be, uh, Eventually, yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, okay. I'm a little, that's kind of a little, you know, I need to figure out exactly. I have to set them up to Arduinos and make them sound sensitive. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to make some music videos. So we wow. can, we, before we actually perform, yeah, I'm going to make some music videos this summer. And that should be really fun. So this this instrument you had right there tell us yeah. a little, tell us a little bit about that and what you do with it because it's kind of like that's your main axe yeah i was so, i have basically three synthesizers and i'm i'm going to try to get a a different drum machine too but this is basically an omnicord that um a company or a place in portland um like kind of guts it and rewires it and puts in all these copper touch plates. And it was really strange because last weekend when I was the star man performing, I was, it was like 3 PM directly like getting direct sunlight and it heated up the copper. Wow. That's got like tons of feedback. It was so hard to control. It was really bizarre. Yeah. So the heat actually activated it. Holy cow. Yeah, the direct sunlight. It was so weird. Wow. Yeah. This instrument, it's really hard to find now, huh? Um, They still make them. They still yeah. make them. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, this There's a character, uh, and I, it's hard for me to pronounce the name of it, a Sinoquil? Sinusodal. Sinusodal? Tell us a little, yeah. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that character, and it's the character is directly connected to this instrument, or not so, or the music well, that comes. I guess the from the the music that comes out of the instrument. Yeah, I mean, I think the character is basically the character embodies the visionary experience that I had, and really is the vision, um, and so I feel like the character like i'm just like the ve a vessel that the character works through too along with like the mat like the you know scarlett johansson and l fanning masks and so i feel like you know that's it's kind of like the noise um 
is a more like kind of primal way for the for the character to um to communicate or to express itself so yeah i've just been so i've been experimenting with like different and it's all pretty much analog at this point which is what i'm excited about is that it's all just electricity and so there's something really just about that idea of like how much you can get from just like energy and there's something that kind of like moves against like time you know like time and space i don't know there's something kind of really interesting about that and so all my synthesizers they just you know mess with different electrical currents wow so is there any way i can interview uh this character of yours yeah. Briefly, not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> because I would like uh, also to see uh, if the character and you would perform maybe some music after a few questions. Yeah. So before I start, tell me the name. How to pronounce this name? Sin- uh, sinusodal. Sin- sinus- sin- sinusodal? Yeah, sinusodal. 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 I don't want to offend it. Sinusodal. That's all right. Okay. So sinusodal. Where are you from? performing on stage or do you feel safe performing with Christy Blizzard? (laughs) Are you going to be a member of the band Bill Hicks UFO Encounter. What country do you want to perform in one day? Okay, so it'd be really cool now if you could do some kind of very organic uh, live performance music piece for us. You're welcome to introduce her or just go right into it, but I have no more questions.
Thank you for this interview. Is there anything that you want to share with the with the folks watching this? How about your your Instagram or your website or anything like that? Um, I think no. I mean, I think that we're at a really. I think that you know everything that um, you know. I feel like that you know they've given me is all very positive, and I feel like it's very optimistic for us as you know a species. So it's like we're kind of really fucked up right now, but it's all very optimistic. You know, they're basically our spirit guides, and for some reason, I can kind of, you know, like I a kind conduit. of, kind of, yeah, I can like. But there's other people that are conduits too, who, you know, and we, but we can all do it. We all have some. There, we all have a group of them. So it's you know, but it's very oh. optimistic. Wow, it's very positive. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's why the work is so beautiful. I love your work, as you know, you. and I hope you perform in New York again very soon. Yes, anytime. Yeah, I would love to. Um, thank you so much. We'll be in touch. Okay. You and your work is the shit. Oh, thank bye you bye. So much. All right, bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye.